سفيان الثوري رحمه الله هي سيد الخلفاء الراشدين خمسة خلفاء that are guided are five أبو بكر عمر عثمان علي and عمر بن عبد العزيز that's why they call him الخليفة الخامس the fifth خليفة يعني can you imagine what kind of honor is this to be called the fifth خليفة now before I continue I want to tell you that عمر بن الخطاب the, if you want to call him the great grandfather he saw one time in a dream he said سيكون من ولدي رجل بوجهه شجع يملأ الأرض عدلا he said one of my offsprings he will have a mark on his head and he will at, at his time justice will prevail when Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was very young, 9, 10 years old, and he was walking next to the horses of his father, one of the horses hit Umar ibn Abdul Aziz in his head and had a major mark on his head. When the father, يعني usually when you see this happen to your son, what happened? You go crazy. The father was very happy. He knew that <laughs> this is the son because that story was very famous. It was very famous. When Umar said that, everybody had a child from the Umar's progeny, they used to look if there's any mark on him. So when, they, when he saw this, he said, so you're going to be a Saeed. You're going to be a very happy man. Believe it or not, all this greatness was only for two years and four months. That's it. In his time, justice prevailed. He abolished taxes. Unpaid labor was made illegal. Unpaid labor was made illegal. And many scholars, you know the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that he said, every, once every hundred years, Allah will send a person that will renew, يعني, renew this deen. So many of the ulama said he was the mujaddid of his time. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was the mujaddid of his time. So Umar, on his deathbed, his wazir came and he said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, and keep in mind, ruler of 20, 21 countries, said, you did, need, you did not leave anything for your children. Children have nothing. So he said, Wallahi, even though they have nothing, but I did not deprive them from anything. And he said his famous statement, he said, if my children are righteous, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَتَوَلَّى الصَّالِحِينَ if my children are righteous, then Allah will take care of the righteous. That's what He said in the Quran. And if my children are not righteous, I will never leave them money to help them disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If my children are righteous, Allah will take care of them. Because He said that in the Quran. And if they're not righteous, how can I leave them money to use it to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Subhanallah. He used to cry. His wife used to go into his room. She said, while we are in the bed, in the bed, he used to shiver like a bird from crying. And when she asked him, why are you crying, Ya Umar, Ya Amir al muminin He said, didn't you hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said on the day of judgment? Fariqun fil jannah wa fariqun fil sa'ir. And I have no clue where I am going. A group is going to hell and a group is going to jannah. And I have no, no, no idea where I'm going. Subhanallah. This is Umar ibn Abd Aziz, the fifth Khalifa. He put Allah first in all his actions. He did not worry about anybody. He always feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much in every aspect of his life. And he was always worried about the day that he stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. From his famous uh, statements that he said, he said, Taqwa is not by praying all night and fasting all day, but rather it's by abiding by the commands of Allah and staying away from His prohibitions. So I was just going to read word by word and we'll finish with this inshallah. His final, he said this only a couple of days before he stood on the member and he said this and he died right after that. He said, he praised and thanked Allah. Then he said, O oh people, you have not been created in vain. You had not been left without a purpose, and surely you shall have a time in which Allah shall judge among you. So he shall be wretched who got out from the mercy of Allah, which encompasses everything. And he shall be deprived of a garden as wide as the heaven of the earth. 
let it be known that security tomorrow is for those who fear today. Let, let it be known that security tomorrow is for those who fear Allah today and sold few pleasures for a permanent one and a transit pleasure for an everlasting one. Do not you see that you are the offspring of the perished and you shall leave it to those who will come after you? Until you come to the best of hires, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every day you follow the coffin of so and so who died after the end of his lifetime. Then you place him in the ground and leave him without a cover. He left the causes and his beloved one for reckoning, carrying only his good deeds. By Allah, I'm telling you this while I know that none of you has sins more than I have. By Allah, I'm telling you this while I know that none of you has sins more than I have. So I seek Allah's forgiveness for you and for me. When one of you has a need which I can fulfill, I shall fulfill. And no one of you needs a good living, but I equate between his living and his mind and mine until the, they both are equal. By Allah, if I had wished a better living standard, my tongue would have expressed it, and I know how to get it by its means. But it was written in Allah's record, and according to His just laws, some means in which He indicated the ways of His obedience and forbade His disobedience. After this, two days later, Umar Abdul Aziz passed away. Subhanallah, ya akhwan. Of course, this is a beautiful story, and a great man, so honored to have such a man in our history. But what can we learn from this? <clears throat> How can we raise Umar bin Abdul Aziz? How can we imitate him and emulate his life in our life? Wallahi, if you look at his seerah, there's one thing that you derive, you conclude. He put Allah first.